Hello, welcome to TechWeb Dots. How we can export C# -sharp data table to CSV? Okay, so let's move ahead without wasting time. So main points that I'm going to cover today these are how can we create CSV file and what is the shortest and fastest way to create a CSV file and how we can write a code to download the CSV file on client machine suppose the request is coming from browser or request is coming from the mobile device so it will work for all and i will also go through the code which is required to develop all this even in the visual studio and i will also give you a brief introduction about the comparison between xls file and csv file and just one more important point steps are almost same you can use the same piece of code in dotnet core as well okay and I strongly suggest you to watch the video which was already available in the description of this video. How can we create XLS file with auto filter or without filter? Okay, so let's switch to Visual Studio. For the interest of time, I have already implemented a piece of code for you and I will go through you every important line of code which is required for you and I will share all the information which is required to create CSV file. So this is my Visual Studio and it is a very simple SV.NET web form application and as you can see we are on export in Excel ASVX web form and in the page load what we are doing we are creating a one table to populate some data okay and assigning it to the grid view okay. After that we have two buttons on the second button click we are trying to export data table as CSV okay if I hit F12 here so you can see this is the important piece of code that I'm going to share with you so first we are checking if table not equal to null and table dot rows dot count greater than zero it means there are rows in our table then these are the important steps that we are performing to create the CSV file in a fastest and smallest way and also we are downloading this file onto the client machine just on just one click okay so what we are doing here we are creating a one string variable and concatenating the date time now dot to universal time and just giving the extension dot csv okay in the next line what we are doing we are replacing the special character now our file name is ready now what is the second thing we are doing we are uh, creating a string builder which is good for handling the strings and in the second line what we are doing we are calling table dot columns and we are calling the cast method so what cast does is it casts the element of a system dot collection dot i enumerable of the specific type okay now we can see we have a column that we specified to cast and we are selecting each column which is available in this table okay and what we are fetching from that column its column name and at the end we are converting it into an array so finally as you can see if you hover over you will see it will return a i enumerable of a string so we can hold this result into array of string and the name we are giving is column names in the next line we are saying this will be our header so as you can see we are performing a string dot join and applying comma because all the column names then that we want to append and we want to separate them by comma okay so all the names will be concatenated with the help of comma and now we are giving append line so what it will do it will add all the comma separated values and move to the next line okay if you will read the definition of append line it says append a copy of the specified string followed by the default line terminator to the end of the current string builder object okay now we are on the next line and what we are doing next we are calling table dot as enumerable so which will return the enumerable row collection and in that we are selecting each row and in that we are joining every element or you can say every column item array which is available in that row and concatenating that with the help of comma okay and at the end we are converting this into to list okay so at the end we will get the list of a string 
and in the next line what we are doing we are preparing rows by joining as we earlier what we did we perform all we concatenate all the columns and then separated by comma and just add into sp string and for the rows we are doing the same we have already created line uh, which and in that we have the values which are comma separated and now we are appending all those lines by injecting environment dot new line so that every line is appended into my sp string in the next line and it will be easily managed by sp dot append line and we are just appending the rows okay so this is the piece of code which is required to create the comma separated values okay and now what we are doing here we are preparing to download this comma separated values on the client machine as a csv file as you can see i have commented few line of code if i will expand this you can see there is a for each loop okay and in that we are reading all the table rows and manually we are fetching the column name and fetching the column value okay and at the same time we are also validating this column data okay if i will uncomment this one so you will see so we are also validating that column data by creating one more new method so what this method is doing it is only performing the validation of data if the quote is exist in our data or if comma is exist in our column value then we are handling double quotes and we are handling comma in this way and we are filtering out the input data which is coming for each column before writing to the excel file okay now you must be thinking why i am showing this piece of code the reason is in some cases i found when we are dealing with huge amount of data when i say huge amount it means i am considering we have more than 100000 rows is there that you want to write in the csv so if in that case the expected result is not coming that you want in that case you can try this piece of code as well and don't worry about the piece of code all the important piece of code available on my blog or you can also get that from github repo and there is no difference in functionality you can comment these three line of code okay and it will work in the same way you just need to comment this one and uncomment and uncomment this line of code this will be the first point http context dot current dot response so response is something which is responsible for reply to the user if the request is coming from the client client browser okay so what we are doing we are first performing the clear operation then we are setting the content type which will be octet string it is supported for csv file as well and xls file as well okay and we are performing add header in header we are specifying what will be the length of the string okay and ultimately it will be the length of the file as well and then we are again adding one more header value and in it we are saying it will be attachment and file name will be git view data export field info that we specified earlier okay and for the cache we are saying we don't need to hold any cache okay and then we are calling the response dot write method which will simply write this string to the client browser okay and then we are saying we want to end this stream we don't want to write any more okay so we have completely check what is exactly written into the code so let's start this application how it is working now you can see our application is successfully launched so if you like this ui so the link is given in the description of this, of this video let's so let me provide username and password click login this is the page it is responsible for generating the ppts but we want to focus on excel files okay so now as you can see this is the same table that we have generated behind the scene and we are hard coded these values and if i click on this export in excel in earlier videos i have performed this action but now we will perform export in csv action okay if i will click on this so there will be a pop up to save this option so now you can see i have the option to save this file as a csv file i will select the desktop and simply hit on save okay now you can see file is successfully loaded on my machine now let me click on this to open the file 
file is opening as you can see this is the same data which was available on our web application so you can check you can compare this this is the same data which we have used in our web form okay i hope all these points are clear let's go back to the presentation now as i said earlier i will also show you what is the difference between xls file and csv file so you can take a pause of the screen and read out all those important points but let me explain a few of them so excel file is the main binary file format for all excel sheets okay and csv is comma separated values excel is a spreadsheet that saves file in its own proprietary format via excel file or xlsx file csv is the format for saving tabular information into a delimited text for the extension csv excel file can be opened with microsoft excel doc only and csv can be opened with any text editor in windows like notepad ms excel as well excel consumes more memory while importing data and importing csv file can be much faster and it is also consume less memory it is a binary file that holds information about the worksheet in a workbook it is a plain text file with a series of values separated by a comma it is also called flight file as well and excel file is easier for the end user to read large data files and in terms of csv it is not easier for the end user to read large files so that's it for this video i hope you like this piece of work if you have any question any suggestion any comment just mention it into the comment box and your feedback is the only inspiration for me to create such videos i hope you like this video hit on the like button and don't forget to subscribe see you in the next video bye bye